Welcome to this boat building tips special. I was a complete novice when I started to build my boat, so I put this video together to share some of the things that I've learned during the experience of building the pocket ship. I want to pass on a few tips and share with you some of the things that I do differently with hindsight. Always a wonderful thing. These tips come from my experience of building a pocket ship using the stitch and glue method, but of course can be applied to building many other types of boat. You can of course buy the pocket ship as a kit to build but I decided to go down the route of building from plans and making all the parts myself. Uh, this does take quite a long time but it's also a very satisfying process to go through. Working most Saturdays and the odd evening it took me about eight months to make all the parts for the pocket ship before I could start putting it together. When I was smelting some lead, it took quite a long time to melt each kettle full of lead. In this case, it was about 45 minutes per kettle full and I needed several of these. All in all, it was quite a long process and quite a long day to complete this step of the process. I decided to build the boat on a movable cradle with wheels on so that I could wheel it into the garage when the weather wasn't so good or for storage and I could wheel it outside when it was nice weather or when I needed space around the boat to work on it. Unfortunately I couldn't find really really heavy duty wheels so the ones I used were okay initially but eventually as I added more parts to the boat and the weight got heavier one of these wheels disintegrated. So what I did instead was to buy some replacement wheels and add more of them to spread the load on each wheel. And this seemed to work okay. On the cradle I used eight wheels altogether. The wire that I used for the stitches for assembling the boat, I just used ordinary gardening wire because this is quite economical and it was certainly strong enough and easy enough to work to carry out this stage. When fitting the bulkheads make sure they are square on to the boat because they do tend to shift as the boat is pushed and pulled into shape. So be sure to check this and check this again before you fit them in place with epoxy resin. I'm speaking from experience here of course. Trust your eye. Take time to stand back and look at the boat. Admire your work but check that everything looks okay. When you're working in close quarters, as I was here, painting the waterline, it's very difficult to see imperfections. But as soon as you're able to stand a distance back from the boat, any errors will jump out at you very quickly. So save yourself the time and trouble of having to do things again by taking the time to step back from the boat regularly and just check that everything's looking okay. Masks are essential for some tasks and during the pandemic we got used to having these disposable masks around. If we breathe fine dust into our lungs our bodies really struggle to get it out again so best not to let it get in there in the first place. Get into the habit of having some masks around for whenever you're sanding or doing anything a bit dusty in the workshop and you'll really feel much better for it. Bending wood onto the boat was easier with thinner bits of wood, such as the transom trim. Here you can see the tow rails, they were a bit thicker, so they were a bit more difficult to bend. 
and more prone to break if you try and bend them too far. So when it came to fitting the main rails, that's why these are made from three layers of wood, which are individually more easy to bend, especially when you're bending them without the complication of steaming the wood first. Now it's good to have a large number of clamps to hand. It's good to have a few of these heavy duty clamps, which were great for instance for pouring the lead into the keel uh, but these are expensive and quite heavy as well. In addition to these I'd recommend getting a whole load of uh, these smaller cheap clamps, these economy ones, which don't last that well but uh, it's very handy to have a number of them sometimes as you can see here. There are many different designs and sizes of clamps Suffice to say, it's good to have plenty of them and a range of different types because they always come in handy.